Welcome back to another episode of The Scran Line. I'm Nick and today I'm gonna to be sharing my top tips and tricks to help you get perfectly risen cupcakes. I get you guys asking me lots of questions about how my cupcakes come out so nice and flat without any colorization and I have three simple tips that are gonna help you get perfect cupcakes. The first thing is filling my cupcake lighters up the right amount. Now in each written recipe, I actually specify how much to fill up your cupcake lighters with each different type of butter. For example, my red velvet butter, it has a lot of raising agents. It's got baking powder and bicarb soda in it. So you don't actually need to fill up the cupcake liners that much because that butter rises a lot. In my vanilla batter, it actually doesn't rise too much. So you fill it up just above three quarters of the way. Now, the way that I get each cupcake liner filled the exact same amount every time is with one of these. So I use a ice cream scoop. These are used for ice creams and for getting like scooping out ice cream, but a lot of people actually use these for cupcake batter and I actually use it for cake batter as well. So this is a trick that I learned back when I used to work in a bakery and we used to use an ice cream scoop. In the morning, we would be baking about a thousand cupcakes. This was the quickest way to make sure they all looked perfect when they went in the oven and came out. So I have different sizes and I specify the measurements over on my website in the tools and equipment section. So go check it out. But I basically use the medium size scoop for most batters unless I'm scooping out cake batter. Speaking of cake batter, I actually use this method for my cake tins as well. And some people measure their batter by weight and then kind of distribute it evenly amongst their cake tins that way. I find that this is quicker and easier. So you just line up your cake tins next to each other once you've oiled them and lined them with baking paper. And then you just scoop, scoop, scoop until you run out of butter. And then that way you've got the same amount of butter in each cake tin every time. So that is the trick that I use to make sure that everything is filled perfectly. The second tip I use when it comes to cakes especially, well, just the cakes, is that there's a way to make sure that your cakes don't end up cracking on the top and rising like a volcano as well. And the reason why you want them to rise flat is because most of the time when you're actually putting a cake together, you're actually trimming each cake in half. But before you trim each cake in half, you're trimming the top off. Rather than trimming the top off because it rose like a volcano, there's actually a trick to get it to raise nice and flat. So I use this thing. I don't remember what it's called, but I'll pop it up on screen. So this is like a ring of, let's see, does it say on here? No, it doesn't. But basically you wet this with water and then you wrap it around your cake tin and you bake with this on. So you're basically dressing up your cake tin before you bake. And what this does is it actually helps distribute heat evenly in your cake tin so that the outside doesn't bake before the inside bakes. And that's important because it'll actually help your cake rise evenly. So it cooks on the outside the same time as it cooks on the inside. So this is a little trick to getting nice, perfectly flat, non-caramelized cakes. So that actually don't caramelize either. Now, I bought this online on Amazon, but you can actually make your own and it's really easy. You get a long strip of paper towels, wet it, and then roll it up into a long piece of, well, a long piece. Then you wrap that in aluminium foil, aluminium, that's how we say it here. And then you wrap it around your cake. And it's basically the same as using one of these. So that's tip number two. The next tip is mixing your batter. When you're making cupcakes and cakes, it's really important not to over mix. And the reason is because when you over mix, 
you develop the gluten in the batter. And the best way to know that you're not over mixing is that when you can see no dry ingredients showing in the batter when you're mixing it, that's the perfect time to stop. So I actually mix my batter on low speed if I'm using a machine or just use a whisk. I just gently mix all the ingredients together. That way there's no risk that I'm over mixing my batter and you're also not overworking the gluten. Now, if you do overwork the gluten, what can happen is you end up in a chewy cupcake or cake, which is not nice. You want a nice delicate cake or cupcake. And if you overwork it, it can actually cause your cupcakes to shrink when they cool. And that's a problem because your cupcake liners can fall off the cake as the cupcake shrinks. So don't overwork the batter. The last tip is temperature control. So temperature control is really important when it comes to baking because it can actually dictate the results that you get. Now, with some things like macarons, temperature control is really, really, really important. I'll touch on that in another video. I've got a whole bunch of macaron videos planned. When it comes to cupcakes and cakes, it can actually determine things like caramelization, if you're baking too high. If you're baking too high, you can also end up with a dome-shaped cupcake or cake, or what I call a volcano-shaped cupcake or cake. You just wanna make sure that you're baking at the right temperature. Now, the first thing you wanna do is get to know your oven. One way to do that is by getting an oven thermometer. You can get these on Amazon. They just sit in your oven and they give you an accurate reading of the temperature inside your oven. Because again, even though you've got the dial set at 175 degrees Celsius, for example, it's actually 15 degrees Celsius higher than that. So you either get to know your oven by doing test batches or by using an oven thermometer. I just got to know my oven by doing a couple of test batches and now I know that if I'm being instructed to bake at 175 degrees Celsius, I actually need to be at 160. I bake on a lower temperature for a little bit longer than most other recipes. So typically a cupcake recipe you bake for about 20, 25 minutes. I bake for 40 minutes and I get no colorization, which is great when you've got colored butter and I get nice flat cupcakes and cakes. Now with cupcakes, it's important to get nice flat cupcakes because it's easier to frost them and they look better. But with cakes, typically when you're making a cake, you're slicing each cake in half and then trimming the top off. Well, if you bake it at the right temperature, you don't actually need to trim the top off because it's already flat and you can still easily stack your cake layers. So that way you're saving time, you're saving butter, and you've got a nice cake. Baking at a lower temperature results in a little bit of a denser cake, but it's still fluffy and delicious. So I just wanna put that out there, that it is a little bit denser, but it's still delicious. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed my top tips for getting perfectly risen cupcakes and cakes every time. These are the tricks that I use every single time I bake and they've never failed me. Now, if there's something that I've left out or something you wanna know more about, let me know in the comments and I'll make another video for you guys explaining what you wanna know. If you wanna learn more about baking, then head on over to my basic baking playlist, which I've created for you guys. There's a whole bunch of videos in this series I've already uploaded, learning how to make cupcakes and frosting. We're not even halfway through this series yet and I'm gonna be teaching you about cakes, how to decorate them, get perfectly straight edges. I'm gonna be teaching you about macarons as well, a lot of stuff about macarons. And there's a whole bunch of other fun videos that I've got planned as well. So make sure you're subscribed, number one, and head on over and watch the other videos in this series that have been up so far. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all on the next episode of Basic Baking on the Scram Line. Bye.